Well, folks, I want to take a few minutes and introduce a very special guest today. It's the new athletic director for Norwood Schools. This is JD. JD, welcome to the program, and we want to introduce you to the citizens of Norwood. Let them know who you are, for those who don't know, because you are a uh, former Norwood High School graduate, resident of Norwood. So uh, give us a little background on who is JD? Where did you come from? Uh, well, elementary, grew up on the south side on Floral Avenue. I uh, went to Williams Elementary, uh, then went through uh, the middle school up to the high school, graduated in 99. Um, pretty much, I was born and raised in Norwood, and uh, I've had an opportunity to come back home uh, after college and, every, and playing days in professional baseball, come back home and uh, try to help out the community. Now, now you're, you've been involved in sports for uh, many years now. Yeah, yeah, I played sports all the way through high school. Uh, I received a scholarship to go to University of Toledo and play baseball. Uh, my senior year, I was drafted by the Philadelphia Phillies in the 23rd round uh, in 2003. Um, from there, I bounced around and, uh, from the Phillies to the White Sox organization and then a few years in the independent league uh, where mm -hmm. I was just a free agent. Uh, so I got to travel all, all across the United States. Uh, and it was a great time. Uh, and now uh, I'm back in town and try, trying to work with the sports program that got me to the next level. And now my goal is to help get the young kids in Norwood now to the next level as I got to. So being a Norwood resident growing up in the city of Norwood, you know a lot of the former students. And as I've seen, a lot of the former students now have kids in the city schools. Are you seeing that also? Yeah, definitely. A lot of my classmates in that, I know they have a lot of young kids in the programs, either our little Indians or even maybe in elementary school or middle school coming up. Um, so it's great to see them out there playing and everything like that. And then also talking to their parents and everything. And I think it kind of helps me in my situation because uh, they know that I'm a Norwood guy and that I mean well and that uh, I have a lot of Norwood pride. And I think it helps them support me and they're standing behind me and knowing that I mean well and, and I'm really trying to help these kids out. Yeah, because I always say once an Indian, always an Indian. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So one thing we're talking about is the parents. And one thing I want to mention to the parents out there is get involved with your kids, whether it be in the school educational part or in the sports. The best thing you can do for your kids is to be at the event. Uh, join the Boosters Club. Uh, if somebody's out there and they want to join the Boosters, how do they do that? Uh, each year our youth goes around the community and they sell the booster cards and uh, when you purchase a booster card on the bottom there it has the dates of all the booster meetings uh, and basically just show up to one of the meetings uh, and just play part in, in all of the volunteer work that they do and a fundraising and that because uh, the booster really is our main support line right. uh, all the fundraisers and the money that they raise and that's what purchases the, the uniforms that the kids are wearing on Friday nights and and everything like that and that's a major amount of our budget with athletics is coming from our boosters and, and they're really supporting us uh, and, and right now the boosters we do we definitely need a lot of help and a lot of support from the community uh, right now and, and I think I would love to see a lot of the parents come out and support the kids uh, especially in rough times now how it is I mean the more support and more people we can get uh, it's gonna be great mm -hmm. so definitely uh, play part in the booster uh, attend a meeting it's usually in the evenings on Monday nights uh, like around 7 o'clock or so um, it's in the high school cafeteria um, just come to play part uh, and also say your say on what you think the athletics what's going on in athletics right now and everything and uh, but just the the more support that we can get is the best yeah because i think the worst thing is for a parent to sit back and then all of a sudden say well why did they do that they shouldn't have done that right so get involved with the kids that way you know exactly what's going on and like you say you can have an input what happens in norwood athletics exactly yeah so. yeah the other thing is uh we were talking about boosters and volunteers uh one thing is here at the norwood community television we are looking for more volunteers to help with the sports programs. There's a lot of sports programs that go on in Norwood, and I think that uh, the folks out there can help us out by getting out and videotaping the events because we can't be at every single sport event. Like I think this weekend coming up, there's sporting events for three or four different uh, departments. Right. Yeah. I through the fall and the winter, I mean, almost every day you can guarantee that there's some type of game going on. Uh, this fall, if it's not middle school football or volleyball, it's going to be high school tennis, golf, or even the boys and girls soccer. Um, so, and I think it's great. The kids, they can sit at home and watch the game after the next day on TV and they get to see how they performed and everything. And I know back when I was in school, uh, there was a lot of games filmed and it was always... Yeah 
good to go after the game, even home, maybe watch it later that night or the next morning or so. And, and I think that it would be a great opportunity for the kids and stuff. And we just need the volunteers, like you said. Uh, if we can get the volunteers to come out and, and film, you work the cameras, film the game, or even announce it, the game or so, work on the broadcasting or so. Uh, just the more hands and soldiers that we can get to work together, I think we can better our pro athletic program and also help out the TV crew. Right, right. Because like you say, you know, we can get some former athletes like yourself right. that can come back and help out the schools here, even if they just want to broadcast a game and do color commentary. That's going to really help out, you know, and I think that, that would be great for people to do. Yeah, definitely. And we could always use help, too, uh, with the athletic department, uh, working concessions or the gates and, st and everything like that. And we always try to work something out with the, the parents and that if they want to volunteer and work gates or, or concessions, we always try to work out some type of plan, like getting in free to the games or something like that. And, uh, and we all, always definitely can use more hands uh, with the gate, the tickets, and also the concessions and that. So, and, and just volunteering, being a supporter of the program around the kids and stuff is going to be helpful. Right, right. Now, if somebody out there wants to volunteer, how, how do they do it? Do they contact you or, you yeah, know, how do they do that? They could contact me uh, and I could lead them in the right direction if they want to be part of the booster and work with the concessions and that I can set them up with the booster president, Julie Chambers, who's uh, president right now of the booster. Um, or myself, uh, I'm in control of the gate and with the tickets and everything like that, or even working on the field, the flag crew and stuff. Uh, so they could just contact me um, at the, on the website. Uh, they have my uh, email and also phone number where they can just shoot me an email if they're interested or give me a call. Um, and I'm in the office usually all the time, so okay. they can contact me that way and I can set them up somewhere wherever they feel like they think they can help the best. Now we'll put this on the screen, but what is the phone number for them to call you? Uh, it's 924-2883. Okay, and then the website is? Uh, NorwoodSchools.org. Okay, and then once you're there, you can navigate and just find right. the athletic yeah. department. Yeah, there's a section with uh, Norwood Athletics, and you click on that, and it'll, give, it'll actually describe what the booster is, and, and then also ex explain our philosophy of the athletic program and everything like that. Um, so, and it also has all the dates and stuff for the schedules coming up, games coming up and that. Okay. So, Okay. Yeah, because I picked up uh, this, this pocket schedule, and you said you're going to have some of these at this Friday night's football game, right, the yeah. home game. Yeah, we'll always have some pocket schedules or poster schedules at Friday night football games, and then also at some of our sponsors' uh, businesses, they have pocket schedules as well. Uh, Norwood Creamy Whip, uh, King Clippers, um, Barbershop, Big Papa's Car Audio. Um, so a lot of our sponsors as well, they... Uh, I gave them a few pocket schedules to pass out, and, that, and they're a big hit. I know uh, the Creamy Whip's called several times to get more. <laughs> so, so now, is that the one that's across from uh, Sharpsburg there? Right, yes. Okay. The, the Norwood Delight Creamy Whip. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because uh, one of the things I want to kind of go over and let people know that are out there is how much different sports there are going on right now. Uh, one of the things is, like you said, Varsity Golf. They've got a couple of uh, dates coming up at the mill which uh, is at Sharon Woods, right. and uh, varsity golf. A lot of people didn't even know we had golf. Right, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure we didn't have golf back when I was <laughs> in school, but uh, now our golf team is uh, it's headed by Coach uh, Brad Hunt, who's been a teacher here in Norway for a long time. Uh, and he, he does a great job with the guys, and we actually have a, uh, a lady golfer this year, um, mm. and we've had to register for the state, so she'll be qualifying in tournaments and stuff as well. Um, she's playing, participating with the boys during the season, because uh, we don't yep. have enough to fill a special team. Okay. But when it comes to tournament time, she's going to be uh, qualifying just on the women's golf team. So, um, but they're doing a great job. Uh, we have a young gentleman, Benji Moore, uh, who actually during the summer worked at Avon uh, oh, okay. on the greens and stuff. And uh, he's been working with the pro, and, and then his swing has really improved. And, and Coach Hunt's really looking forward to his, uh, his season this year. He said that he's really improved, and he, he expects good things from him. Yeah, so if there's any golfers out there who would like to get a cram you know, camera out, and go right. tape, you know, and enjoy watching some golf out there. I think that'd be a great opportunity to get that on the, some of the TV programs. So, yeah. you know, for any golfers out there, good exercise outdoors. Right. That's, you know. Uh, now, we've got girls varsity tennis uh, that happens. Uh, they've got some dates coming up. In fact, uh, the next one is on the 30th, but that's at Deer Park. Uh, where do the girls play the tennis games at here when they're home? Uh, all of our home matches are down at Waterworks Park, uh, right across uh, from this football stadium uh, down in that area. Um, so co the coach is Maggie, Maggie Tapia. She's a teacher here as well as Norwood, and she's doing a great job with the girls as well. Uh, I think we had seven girls come out for the team this year. Uh, they actually competed tonight against Harrison, uh, and, and they did pretty well. They're improving each day, and that's what you expect right. to see from the girls. Is, uh, you want, each day when they go out, you want to see improvement. 
uh, and I know that they're working hard and everything. Yeah. Now we've also got boys, uh, not only the but the junior varsity, but the varsity soccer boys. Uh, they're coming up. They've got some games coming up. Uh, they play the soccer games at the Shea Stadium? They play back-to-back. -back. JV usually plays first around 545. Okay. Uh, and then after that game, usually probably around 7 o'clock or so, the varsity guys would play. And uh, all the soccer games are at Shea Stadium, also down on Harris Avenue uh, at the Shea Stadium. Okay. Now that's, that's another thing where, you know, it'd be great to have somebody. I, I don't know if we could get an announcer like we've heard some of the soccer announcers right. with the big goal oh, sound. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> But we, you know, it'd be great to get somebody out there to film some of the soccer games and get them on TV. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, that would definitely be special because I, I don't ever recall soccer being filmed there on no. the television. So that would be nice for the kids. No, no. So for a soccer parent, come on down to the studio here. We can tell you, come on down to this. Uh, we'll also put the phone number of the studio here. You can call, and they'll give you the information on how you can film the kids games no matter what sport they're in but uh, yeah it's, it's real easy to do and they'll teach you how to use all the equipment uh, also you've got the girls junior vars and uh, varsity soccer they wear home games there at Shea also yeah it's the same uh, same setup as the boys 545 JV 7 o'clock girls uh, and it's at Shea Stadium as well and uh, they're a young team uh, but last night we uh, defeated St. Bernard six to nothing Wow! Uh, and uh, this year uh, I mean they're pretty good and they were good last year and went far I believe they might have been sectional champs last year uh, and with the youth the freshman class coming in and then the sophomores I mean they played real well uh, and you can tell that they know what they're doing and with their passing and footwork and stuff and, uh, and, and I see a good year as well coming from our girls soccer program so and actually our head coach John Worley uh, he coached the boys last year who had a great season and he, he's actually moved over to the girls now and, uh, and he's picked up right where he left off with the boys so it's going to be exciting to see uh, the girls play this year yeah yeah now we've we've mentioned the stadium enough we might as well talk about it friday night football high school football on friday night seems to take the tri-state by storm and the first home opener is uh friday the 27th 7:30 start time what time do the gates open let's talk about uh, that we usually start open up the gates say around 6 15 or so 6 6 15 try to get the crowd in and everything uh yeah, this Friday night against Campbell County is our home opener. Uh, new coach this year coming in um, from Lebanon Row, and he was uh, at Coleraine as well. Uh, I think mm -hmm. this year's when they won the state, he was an assistant there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, he has a long record of winning, and Good. hopefully he can bring uh, that winning tradition back to Norwood. Yeah. Because uh, I think uh, this community and these kids, they need it. And, yeah. uh, and I think that he's the right person for the job, and I, and I feel that given in a year or so, I mean, I see a lot of things happening in our football program. So yeah. I'm excited about having him on staff as well. So. Yeah. And that's where we talk about the more we need that extra person on the field. And that comes from that, you know, man in the stands. Right. We want that crowd support to be there on Friday nights. Yeah, so, definitely. and I, I tell people, hey, we've got a nice facility down there at Shea Stadium. Let's, let's get some tailgate parties going on. We've got the concession stand, so you don't have to cook out. But bring your cornhole set. Let's get some horn, cornhole tournaments going on. And, yeah. you know, do some tailgating on Friday night home games down there. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of looking at uh, starting. It's going to be the Varsity Inn Club. Uh, and what it is, is it's going to be tailgating on Friday nights, getting a lot of the alumni back, uh, especially, yeah. say, the 94 class that had a lot of success uh, mm -hmm. on the football field and also on the basketball court. Getting a lot of the alumni back, uh, tailgating before games, and being involved with the kids and stuff, uh, even maybe setting up kind of a uh, – and kind of a, a Hall of Fame camp or preseason camp, yeah. getting the alumni back where they can work out with the guys and then play a flag football game or something, <laughs> kind of as a fundraiser and fun for them to see if they still got it. Right, right. Everything. Uh, but, yeah, definitely more involvement from the alumni community. I mean, it, we have the facilities, like you said, the parking lot and stuff area is great for tailgating. Uh, yeah. Just post up a truck, the grill, get, get out there. It's been terrific weather, and I think Friday yep. night is going to be great weather yep. as well. Uh, and, and it'd be exciting for the kids to see that and see that uh, they're, they're, it means something for them when they can look up in the stands and see the community really pulling behind them. And, yeah, yeah. So, and that would be great to see a lot of tailgaters and just fun activities and events down there. Now I have seen in the past where the football team walks from the high school to the stadium. Are they going to continue that? Uh, I, I'm not for sure yet. Uh, I know they, they used to bus them, and then I think the last few years they've walked from the school de down to the stadium. Um, this year they've practiced a lot more down at Shea, so they're actually storing all their equipment stuff okay. down there. So there's really no need to be up at the school. Um, but I'm not for sure. I know that was something like during the parade, they would kind of be like a parade right. down. Uh, yeah. I know homecoming, they'll definitely probably be doing that on homecoming night. Uh, but as the other games, I'm not for sure yet if they're going to do that.
Because if they do that, I'll tell you what, if we had all these people tailgating as these guys walk through, I think that would be a fantastic for just uplifting, and they'd get pumped up for the game if they saw that. Yeah. You know, that, that would be great. Uh, volleyball. We, uh, we've got uh, the, uh, junior, uh, the, uh, the junior varsity and the varsity volleyball games. I was looking at the schedule. They play a lot of games, volleyball does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I know that I think it's I believe it's like 24 games in 26 days or so that they have to get the games in. So it, it's back to back action. Uh, so I mean, there's some good to it and there's some bad too. So I mean, right. if you if you don't do so well in one match, you know that the next day you got to turn right around and do it again right. and hopefully do better. So uh, it gives them some time. It doesn't give them time to really think about that loss because they got to go right back into the next match. So, but yeah, it's definitely back to back packed games. Um, and there, that would be exciting too to have the girls uh, have someone come out and film them as well. Right. Because uh, you don't see much of the volleyball, high school volleyball, at least on TV and that. Right. So if we could possibly get a TV crew out there to film those games, I think that would be exciting. Yeah. And there again, that's where some of the, the boosters and the parents of some of the students, if you'd like to get involved, uh, you know, contact the studio here. We can set you up with all the equipment you need and you can film it. And then the kids would, you know, can see themselves on TV. That, that would be just phenomenal for the kids to see. And that's what, you know, we're here for is to make sure the kids enjoy themselves, have a good time and, you know, make athletes feel important other than just winning or losing. So it's, it's good to see them on TV and let them have a little fun with that. Uh, here's a sport that just you don't see very much except for the start and finish line, cross-country running. I mean, there's no way I'd want to keep up with these guys. <laughs> but they've got a big uh, invitational coming up again on the 28th up in Wilmington. But uh, you're saying that's like an all-day event. Yeah, it's uh, sponsored by Finish Line there at uh, Wilmington College. Um, and it's a big invitational they have each year. Uh, I think the last few years now our cross-country team has competed in it. Um, and uh, it is, it's an all-day event. They start in the morning and pretty much it goes through the evening. And so and I'm sure there's a lot of sponsors and that going to be up there, and plus finish line since they are sponsoring the whole right. invitational. Um, so in our, our cross-country team, a lot of our cross-country runners, they play soccer as well during the week. Okay. And then on Saturday mornings, they'll get out there and they'll run cross-country. And they compete as well. Uh, we've always had one or two uh, really good comp competitive runners each year. Oh, wow. um, and our coach is Larry Parker, who's a Norwood guy. Good. Uh, and he's been <laughs> in the program for years, and, and he does a great job with our runners. Uh, and he coaches the track as well in the spring. But, uh, I mean, he just does a fabulous job, gets the kids out there working hard. Uh, and everything, and there are a couple of senior uh, runners this year that uh, he thinks that's going to do pretty well and stand right. make us make a mark in the league and also in these invitations. That's great. That's great. Yeah, like I said, you know, we we may not uh, be able to film the whole run, right. cross country run, but you know, it'd be great to see you know at least some of the start and finishes, and you know, highlight some of the kids that are actually running. Like you say, soccer, you know, they do a lot of running there, so it's a good prep for them to do cross country runs. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Now, we've talked a lot about different sports and talked about, you know, uh, all the events that's going on throughout the city of Norwood. This is just for the fall. This, and then we haven't even gotten into the winter sports, which we'll get into more later. But uh, what can someone, you know, we would tell people to volunteer and help out mm -hmm. here. Uh, is there anything parents can do to help you out? Since you're, this is your first year, so what can right. we do to help you out? Uh, just, uh, I mean, I need as many hands in, in the pot as possible. Uh, like I said, working with tickets and the, with the gates and everything like that. Uh, just involvement. We have a touchdown club where it's uh, moms that feed the, the football players before the game and everything. Um, so just as much, anybody, if you, if you have the field, the volunteer, uh, just contact me. Let me know what you want to do, and, and we can find something. Uh, and just being involved in the athletic program uh, is going to be a big thing. Uh, because there's, there's plenty to do. Um, so, and it is it's definitely a heavy task with the middle school and then the high school sports as well. And so as much help as I can get it possible, it's great. And especially Norwood. Um, mm -hmm. Being a Norwood guy and stuff, I understand what the sports and the school means to this community and that. And, uh, and the passion that I have as well, I know there's several others out in the community that has the same passion that I do. Uh, and if you want to express that passion towards the, the sports and that, feel free to contact me and come out and help. Uh, and like I said, we need as much help as possible. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be great. And it's not a lot of time that you have to do it. And I think if we have enough parents, they can just take one week that they have to help. And that way, you know, 
yeah. it, it won't be such a burden on any one person. Right, not at all. And I mean, we already have, uh, there's some volunteers already, uh, like Danny Blair is a, uh, is a Norway guy. Uh, he volunteers and announces the folk Friday night football games. He's the voice of the Indians on Friday nights. Uh, Good. That's a volunteer. And all of our flag crew, uh, at Mr. Atwood, uh, Larry Atwood, he yeah. uh, he fills those guys, and he's been doing that for years. And so, mm -hmm. getting the guys that take care of the field markers and first down marker and, and everything, and everyone you see working on the field and around the area is volunteer. Uh, they do not get paid to do that, and it's them just wanting to help out the athletic program. And and, and I'm very thankful for those people that, that take their time out and to come out and help out the athletic program. And all it is is their passion for Norwood and for the sports program. Right, right. So. And if you can't volunteer, show up to the game. Right. Tell people, show up to the game. Bring noisemakers. We want the place to be rocking when you guys are there on the field. So parents, fans, alumni, show up. Bring some noisemakers. I mean, you know, I think of them, like you say, in the World Cup soccer with those loud things. Yeah. I'd love to see your stands filled with red and blue, those things. I mean, uh, maybe we'll have to see if we can find some of those and yeah. sell them. <laughs> and definitely the kids, they feed off of that. I mean, if we have a sellout crowd and they're loud and into the game, I mean, the, the kids just feed off that and they play, they perform even better out there on the field. Yeah. So definitely uh, if we can fill the stands each Friday night for these kids and even during the week for soccer uh, or uh, tennis or volleyball or so, I mean, the more crowd there is, is the more energy in the facility and the, the mm -hmm. kids feed off that and they always perform better. Yeah. Now, a couple of things that we don't want to forget about. Uh, cheerleaders are going to be there, help pump up the crowd. So we want to make sure we support them also because even though they're cheerleaders, but I'll tell you what, you have to be an athlete to be a cheerleader anymore. Yes. Uh, and actually our cheerleading, mentioning our cheerleaders, they, uh, they go to camp each year uh, and it's a pretty high ranked uh, cheerleading camp. And they actually this past summer, uh, they finished first in the whole camp. Uh, and we're wow. a Division three school, and uh, our girls were competing against Coleraine, uh, Lakota East, Lakota West, Oak Hills, a lot of Division one schools. Right. And uh, the girls brought home the first place trophy That's great. Uh, for competitions of the cheers and everything. So, I mean, they, they have a good crowd out there, and our cheerleaders, they're working hard. Uh, they're probably, they work hard every day of the summer. Yeah. So, uh, and they also do a lot of volunteer work and stuff. Um, and you'll see them on Friday nights. Uh, the coach has them up in the stands now, the cheering as well, not just on the field. So uh, yeah. definitely, they're, they're out there each night working hard, cheering. And, and I know when they do their cheer, they always want a response back from the crowd. Right. Uh, so, right. So definitely come out and help the cheerleaders cheer them on. The Maybe if we pack the, we just pack the stands so the cheerleaders have to stay on the field. Right. That would be great. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> but also the uh, the other cheerleaders or the band that comes out and plays. Uh, I know that the, the band members, I don't know how many they have this year. Uh, I think they have very good numbers this year. I think there are over 40-some kids in the band That's this great. Year. That's so, great. Yeah, yeah, and actually uh, I spoke with the uh, band director, Mr. Bauer, uh, and this year after each Friday night game, uh, home or away, win or loss, uh, we're going to play our alma mater. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to try to get the whole crowd and the students and the football players and everyone to stick around uh, for the alma mater after each game. And uh, I think, and that's just to bring the spirit back into Norwood and that, right. and, and everything, and let the kids know uh, where they're from, and hopefully they never forget it. And uh, and it's something nice too. And yeah. it, it, like I said, win or loss, uh, they're going to be there each game afterwards, playing the alma mater and, and representing Norwood. That's right. That's right. It goes back to once an Indian, always an Indian. It never leaves you. When you you know, once you get that Norwood pride, it never leaves you. That's right. And and we like you, we always tend to come back. Yeah. <laughs> Some people say it's even like a black hole, you can never leave. That's <laughs> so right, that's true. right, that's so. right. And I see a lot of that, but yeah. that's okay. Oh, that's yeah, all right. Absolutely. That's yes. all right. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed and learned something from today's uh, few minutes we got to spend here. Uh, you can always contact him. We're going to put the phone number up and the email. If you've got questions or you want to volunteer through the athletic department, that would be fantastic. The best thing you can do is show up to the games. Uh, you can even volunteer, I guess, at the games. If you get down there and there's a need, uh, you know, find him. He'll be down there wandering around somewhere, probably, you know, scrambled, looking for, you know, things to fill spots. But uh, also, uh, if you'd like to help videotape any of the athletics that goes on in Norwood, you can do that. We will teach you here at the TV studio how to do that. We're going to put the phone number also for the TV studio, and that's how you can contact the studio so you can get out and film the athletics in Norwood. And we want to get that done as much as possible. So thank you, everyone, for your time and spending it with us, and hope you enjoyed today's program. <laughs>